I recently made a post in the modern data community asking people how they would go about modeling an example set of tables, and in particular, how they would do it in the form of a fact versus dimensions. And I felt this was a helpful exercise and something I wanted to share here on YouTube as well, because I feel that data modeling for a lot of people, it's really abstract and it can be hard to put the pieces together. And it's really helpful to see other examples, even though there might be textbook approaches to certain things. A lot of times people have unique takes on it or it's circumstantial based on the companies. So in this video, I'm going to explain the example scenario and talk through some of the different answers that I got. So in this example, we have a core fact table of transactions linking to product information. And while there's a very clear join to a product key. So you can call it a, let's say a dim product table with descriptions about the product. That's a pretty clear join. But the nuance and the question here was, what do you do about product type information? Each product has a type. There is a product type table available in the source system. So do you create a dim product type or do you combine it with dim products and have one table? And the ultimate question was, which is the right and best approach? So my response to this was, you could do this in one of two ways, one of which I recommended more. So number one was you could, in theory, create a dim product type table and then just establish a join to that. And so in that scenario, your fact table would have two IDs. You would have a product ID going to the dim products table and then a product type ID going to a dim product type table. And in theory, that would work. And I mentioned that this could be a good approach if you have a lot more context around product type. Maybe there's a lot of columns and a lot of information that you have just on that alone. Or maybe there's a lot of values that are going to slowly change over time just with the type information. So handling that as a slowly changing dimension by itself might make the most sense in this scenario. So you create it separately. Route number two, which I would recommend would be to just have a single product table. So a dim product table and add the product type as a column in the dim product table. That way you just have one join to the dim product table. It's a little bit wider. Maybe you need to add a couple other type columns in there, but ultimately then that's going to simplify your modeling rather than dealing with other different tables. And in the scenario that the type changes, if it's just the type column, you could still handle that as a slowly changing dimension. But in that case, your dim products table would be the one that's slowly changing. We're not going to go too deep on the slowly changing aspect, but it is something to consider. And generally speaking, I just feel that's a simpler model and one that I would recommend. Now, there was actually another answer that I think is important to share because it'll highlight the differences a lot of times between different database designs, which can be really important to understand, especially as an engineer when you're modeling things. In this scenario, again, I'm just looking over here at the notes there question was, wouldn't it make sense to create more of a snowflake schema where the dim product table would just join directly to a dim product type table rather than through the fact. And the reasoning for that was because that's what the data itself is saying. So shouldn't you just model it around that? So like most things in data, it's not illegal. You can do it. But in my opinion, when I hear something like that seems to align more with how an application database might be designed rather than how a data model would be designed. Now, you could be following a different data modeling approach. For example, more like the traditional InMint approach. I have another video on comparing and talking about that. But in my opinion, if you're gonna go the fact and dimensions route, it's important to maintain the concept and consistency of a star schema. And to create that true star schema, you pretty much always wanna just join the fact directly to a dimension and not dimension to dimensions directly. Again, there's always edge cases, but you're gonna get many to many relationships and things are gonna blow up up and you're gonna get a lot of duplicates most of the time. But really the main point I wanna drive home really with this whole video is understanding the difference between how a database might be designed like the schemas and the tables in a database for an application. So what's powering an application compared to how to design something for analytics, because they are different. For example, if you're gonna make an application database, you're gonna have individual tables, like in that case, a product type table, a product table, and everything's gonna be really unique and really isolated because you're joining on individual rows most of the time. Generally speaking, that's how applications are developed because things are often joined on rows. Think for a very simple example on a user ID. Let's just say you have a website backed by a database. If you wanna get all the information for an individual user, you're joining on rows. You're not really doing a lot of crazy aggregations and things like that, or maybe you're just pulling up individual information. It's just a lot more efficient to do it on a row-based normalized model. Meanwhile, when you get to analytics, we're aggregating and summarizing and doing things on much more data. And so the design is different. And that's typically where you start to see wider tables and things that are modeled a little bit differently. And this is especially true for most cloud modern databases that are column-based rather than row-based. So again, the computation is different. So how you design it is different. You're also gonna have more control to design and model things based on the business rather than the application. So you're more in control then in that scenario. And overall, it'll just be easier than for your end users or your reporting tool to use a flattened table 
or use those data models that you create rather than trying to recompile everything that the source system has. Your role as an engineer is to consolidate all this data from maybe even multiple sources and creating an internal database architecture that you use specifically for analytics, not for an application or a SaaS product or anything like that. It's for reporting. So when you really think about this question and go layers deeper, that is really the discussion that is happening behind the scenes and why I think it's important to think about. And maybe this was a little bit difficult to explain just through words and uh, visuals and whatnot. It's, for some, I know it's easier to get into the code and see it, but at the very least, I hope this helped make you think a little bit more about how you design things and some things to look out for when you're modeling your own data. So thanks as always for watching and I'll see you at the next video.